Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be doing the drive shafts. Quick update though, um, so the wiring is now finished. Um, I've checked the lengths, I've shortened where required. All the soldering is now done and majority of the tape is now done. So I'll quickly show you that. It's just, well, not to show you, but it's, it's a box full of wires, which are all nicely soldered and nicely taped up. So that can go back in once the engine and stuff goes back in for the very last time. As I explained on the previous video, the engine's gonna be back in and out a few times just for me to check and, and make sure things are perfectly aligned. But anyway, back to the purpose of this video, which is to make some drive shafts, in essence as templates, so that I can make sure they're the right length and then use that length to get a set of custom ones made. So, um, as you can see, the engine's now back in. Um, so what I need to do is to measure both sides to see what length I need to cut the drive shafts to, to get them to fit. So my thinking, and based on what I've read, is to set the vehicle to ride height, which I've already done. So when it's at ride height, this wishbone is level. Now clearly if I was gonna run it considerably lower, then the drive shaft would be at a different angle and that would somewhat sway um, or alter the length of the drive shafts or the kind of resting position of the drive shafts. But for me, um, those wishbones being horizontal is at where my rod height is. So that makes things a little bit simpler. Um, in terms of the operation, this is the outer CV, this is the inner CV. The outer CV rotates around 360 degrees, but it doesn't move lengthways along this, CV, along this um, drive shaft. The inner CV does the same kind of 360 degree motion but it also has the ability to move front to back along this along this drive shaft. You can you can see in that movement there, it can go forward and backwards as well as rotate round. So, what this inner and out movement allows the shaft to do is in, ess in essence extend its length forwards and backwards. So, as the suspension moves, clearly the length needs to change, and this inner CV gives it the ability to change its length somewhat. Also, as this outer CV rotates around that 360 degree motion, um, if the shaft was fixed, it wouldn't be able to turn. So as it turns, it kind of extends a little bit as well. So um, that's what that inner, inner CV allows, allows the whole kind of drive shaft to do. So I need to work out the, at the position I'm gonna measure, it's gonna be when the drive shaft is gonna be at its shortest. So, not like that, but like that. So when that's fully compressed in, the actual um, spline is just touching the, the inside edge of this plate. So now that drive shaft is at its shortest. So that's when I want to, that's at this length, this is what I want to be as my um, wishbone is perfectly level and my wheel is perfectly straight. Then obviously any movement from that point, this shaft will be able to extend. So, um, back to the car. So what I need to do now is basically uh, jack up the car, so that, or jack up the car, jack up this side, so the wheel, so the um, wishbone is perfectly level. Do the same on the other side, and then, oh, bear with me. Apologies for the light, but what I've got, I'll just show you. always love simple solutions so I'm going to use this which is one of the plates which hold on the inner CV with a couple of bolts on just to be able to um, measure at the center of this output flange in the gearbox Not sure how clear it is. that's a little bit better so yeah all I'm doing is screwing this in putting that roughly in the center Now what that does is give me a reference position for a, roughly in the middle of this output flange so that when I'm coming through the hub, I've got something to touch against which gives me some, a flush position against this flange. All will become clear when I, when I show you how I measure it, but yeah, that's, that's how I'm doing it. So I'll start with this side because I've already bolted this in. Um, so now I just need to jack up 
this side is the suspensions until the wishbone is level then I can take my measurement level in there just to give me some indication so it's reasonably level let's have a look at that wheel Okay. So now what I'm going to do is use a long pole to go through the hub and then touch that plate that I've put, which is going to be extremely difficult for you guys to see. Let me try and go and get a light. Okay, I've put a light pointing on the output fan, and so you might be able to see it. But this is just looking through the hub and you can see back there on the output flange of the gearbox that little plate so it's that little plate that i'm trying to touch with this rod to give me a measurement to the outside edge of this of this hub so then all i'll do Get a flat edge mark on this with a pen, which I don't have. So as you can see I've marked it on this edge. So that gives me the length that I need at the shortest distance um, between the flange, so between the output um, flange and the gearbox and the outer edge of this. Then in essence I can kind of reverse engineer the length from that dimension and I'll show you how I'll do that. Right, so to be able to calculate um, that kind of minimum length in terms of the shaft itself, not the overall length of the um, drive shaft, just the shaft bit without the CVs, is I need to know if you remember we took the length from the output shaft of the gearbox, which was over here to the outer ridge of this hub, so I need to know how thick this hub is from that flange or that, sorry, edge to this edge so I've measured that, I'm taking that measurement, then the outer CV from this edge, this edge correlates to this edge. Let me put it in there, you can see there, that edge, so I need to know the thickness of this. I also need to know when the drive shaft is inside here from this kind of level point how much protrudes into the shaft I need to f and I've measured that length I also need to measure let's get this straight yeah uh, this distance here which is how much the shaft sticks out past this flange so obviously that's the shaft fully out, when it's fully in, which again is the shortest position, it protrudes out of here, so I need to calculate that length there, not calculate, let's measure it, so I've measured that. So when you've got all those measurements, you can then work out um, how long just the shaft needs to be and cut it and shorten it to that. Okay, I'll just jot down my measurements, 
So um, the spline going into the inner CV is 28 mil. That little spacer that I used to calculate the center position was 2.5 mil. The length I measured was 533 millimeters using that bar. The hub is 92 millimeters, the outer CV 54.4, and then the spline going into that outer CV is 42.5. So using all that, I can calculate the shortest distance I need for the shaft to be. So starting with the, um, actually let's scratch that. Down here. Starting with the um, inner CV and then the hub is over here. This is the outer CV. Uh, this is that little 2.5 mil spacer. So the distance I measured was from that spacer. If you remember, I put that shaft I measured kind of coming through here. That shaft, that bar I used. So I took it from touching that spacer to the edge of that hub. So that distance was 533. Then this little spacer is 2.5. I know the drive shaft goes through the um, inner CV at its shortest kind of compressed length. So it goes through here, that little spline, and that's 28. I know the hub is 92 and then this outer CV is 54.4 then the spline going through here is 42.5 so using all that I can calculate the minimum length which is going to be 28 um, plus 2.5 plus the 533 minus the 92 minus the 54.4 and then add on that 42.5 and let me just grab a calculator and I'll work out what that length is okay so it's 456 millimeters so that is that distance to that distance so that is how long that shaft needs to be at the horizontal position of the wishbone and with the wheel perfectly straight that's the shortest position so that's what I'm going to shorten the driver's side draft shaft too. Just need to measure up the passenger side and then that will be my two lengths. Okay, I've cut them all down to size now. So the longer one, which is the passenger side, no, it's the driver's side, has been shortened to 459. And the shorter one, which is the passenger side, has been shortened to 361. So what I'll do is I'll just pack weld round um, and then try trial fit it to the car just to make sure it's the right length before I fully weld it round and then I'll test it on the car and make sure it's not binding or anything and then we'll see from there okay so just using a bit of angle I've put the uh, drive shaft in and then use these clamps just to kind of align it and make sure it's uh, as straight as can be um, so what I'll do now is just add a few tacks just so I can test fit it and make sure it's the right length right so the shafts are now tack welded together um, I've put the CV joints back on in the Renalta. I've taken all the CV boots off just so I can kind of see the motion and make sure it's not binding and stuff um, as it follow, as it moves through its motion of travel. Uh, this, this is the second time I've fitted this one. Um, the first time it was too long and it was binding, so I've cut it down. I took about five mil off it um, and cut it down and now it seems to be okay. So I've got it at ride height. Let's put some light on it. as clear as possible so as you can see as I'm turning the wheel left and right you can see the shaft moving kind of in and out 
of that, of that inner CV joint. So what you basically want is to be able to go through kind of a full motion and it not bind. And by bind I mean that shaft be um, too long at its shortest point so it's hitting the back of the inner CV joint and in essence getting stuck. So one way to check that is to take it through its full travel and make sure there's still a little bit of movement between the um, outer CV joint and the hub carrier. So as you can see, I've still got at the end of that travel, I've still got a little bit of movement there. In the middle, plenty of movement. To the outer, still a bit of movement, that's fine. So if I, and again, apologies if this isn't coming out very clear, it's quite difficult to hold the camera and do this at the same time, but I will try. So if I start bringing it up a little bit, not too high because it's obviously still lift. No, okay. If I repeat those steps, yep, still got plenty of movement. All right, happy with that. Right, just finished doing the driver's side. So same deal as the other side. Obviously just checking it through it, all its motion to make sure there's enough um, play in the shaft. Um, which there is so happy with that so um both of the drive shafts just got a couple of tap welds on so i'll just give them a bit more um not fully weld but um just enough to make them strong so that when i put the engine in i can actually try and move it around a little bit and do a bit more testing then i'll probably give it a final weld a bit more testing and then once i'm kind of happy at that point then i'll send them off but um so far so good so today has been a productive day in terms of getting that finished um so what I'll do now is I'll just get the engine back out now so um, I can finish the bulkhead stuff in terms of filling all the holes and a bit of sanding and filling and stuff. So that's it for me for today. Um, as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, bye.